Welcome back, everybody. Let me tell you what. We are getting to the end of doing projects on the Rex Saber. The V65 1984-1100. Ah, uh, so... The only things I have to do functionality-wise yet is I want to change out the fluid in the clutch because that was going in and out after I wrecked it on my way home. Just to be sure, I'm going to change out the fluid. I don't know if it got cooked or what, but, you know, this is going to be pretty similar for any hydraulic brake system or hydraulic clutch system on the old Hondas, as many of them are. I do need to replace this guard. I got another one and uh, that's the one that cut the hose. I do have the new hose on there so that's good to go. Ran it, no leaks in the cooling system, everything was working and I believe the fan was even turning on so we're good there. Um, reattached the, oh, my cord is stuck. Reattached the turn signals. As I showed you before that's a little loose but I think it's staying on there. I'm not sure how that's connected. Maybe I'll look into that, but for now, it's good. I uh, do have a cover for this. I have to replace that. That's an easy thing. The only thing I don't know is if my speedometer even works. Uh, I think it's still connected just fine, but without riding down the road or out of the driveway, this, uh, this is not working. I've never had to mess with it, so hopefully that comes back online when I actually get it out on the road. So first things first, I'm going to pop the cover off here, suck all the fluid out of here with this guy, suck it right up through, make sure that's all clean in there, and then what we're going to do is push all the fluid out the bottom. Basically at that point, we're just going to put fluid in here, fresh new fluid, pump it down through until it comes out the bottom. And that's going to come out here. I'm going to put a uh, wrench on here and then uh, put a hose on here so that it pushes out into a bottle. So I'm going to set all that up. Okay, I got her opened up. You can see our fluid is uh, covering the lower hole, so that's good. Does look a little dirty, but I don't know that that's our problem. When I wrecked, laid it over, I might have gotten air in the system very easily could have had air in the system. Um, the 84 Sabre comes with your diaphragm. That's in good shape. I'm liking that. It has a plastic cover on top and then your uh, metal cover. Make sure your air vent hoses or vent slots right here and on the other side. Just want to make sure that they are free and clear and not gunked up. And then, as I said, I'm going to suck that fluid out of there with the uh, with this guy. And then down below, I threw a 5 16 inch uh, closed end wrench there. And then I'm just going to stick my hose here on that end. So then all I have to do is crack this, push the lever, push the fluid out, shut it, and... Uh, goes right in the bottle. So, easy enough. Let's get started. I need to show you what I'm dealing with here. So, look at that. That is disgusting. Very dark brake fluid in there. Yes, this is the clutch, but it uses DOT4 brake fluid. Look at all that. That's just dirty crap sitting in the bottom. So, I'm going to soak all that up with a paper towel and then throw that away. I don't want to pump this stuff down through my system. I want clean fluid going down through there, so we're going to get all this junk out of here. Clean it up with a paper towel, and uh, I use Q-tips also. Um, don't want residue in there, but it seems to work for me. If you have a better option, let me know in the comments. Now let me show you, once I sucked all this out with a paper towel, down here, this uh, junk I had to scrape out with a screwdriver. So right in there, that's just gunk laying down in there. So I should probably grab some brake clean. Maybe I can wipe that out. Let me show you on the screwdriver here. Look at that. It's fo not focusing great. It's focusing on the bike. But look at that. I just scraped that right out of the corner there. So 
I'm going to say this fluid was crappy, and it's a good time to change it. Okay, well, I didn't use a Q-tip, so we don't have to worry about any little fibers in there. Just use that um, blue paper towel, shop towel, and uh, I'm happy with this. Like this stuff down the corner, it cleaned up a little bit, so I'm good with that. That stuff in the corner, I'm not too worried about that in the corner. And uh, uh, maybe I'll clean up these little corners quick. Okay, well, I knocked off this cover. So I didn't realize it was just being held on there by a thread. So uh, now I guess I'll see firsthand if this works or not. But I'll have to reinstall that. Hopefully it still works and I'm good to go. But it's nice having the cover off. I can clean it up. It look kind of like that. So can't really see through them very good in the sunlight. So I'll clean this up. And maybe I'll have to figure out how to get this off without breaking it. Clean that one up. So I guess I'll get in these corners. Clean that up. Okay, I made it all clean and pretty. So now we're going to go with the Dot4 brake fluid. Yes, I buy it pretty cheap from Walmart. But I haven't had any trouble with Walmart brands. So I don't know. That's like 9 bucks, 10 bucks, or something like that. 32 ounces. So... They had uh, a different brand, a name brand too, but I get the cheap stuff. We're going to fill this up to uh, the lower level. On the outside here, it does show lower. So I want to be in the window, and I don't want it completely full because then you can't tell where the level is. I'm going to fill it to lower. you got to watch this as you're pumping this handle. You're going to pump pressure up, and you're going to push it down through because we're going to open the bleeder valve down there and pump it out. So we're going to put fresh fluid in to pump down through the system. And it is from a brand new sealed container. At least it's sealed for now. Always keep it sealed because brake fluid is hydroscopic, which means it collects moisture from the air and then it won't work anymore. So you need to keep, that's why you need to replace this fluid. That's why you don't let this can sit around open. Alright guys, when you're doing this by yourself, you're obviously going to be needing to keep an eye on your reservoir up here. Make sure that this doesn't go dry. You don't want it to go down below the, the hole that it's pumping through. Because then you're going to be letting air in the system. This can be more fun if you do it with two people. One person watches the level here and make sure you don't go below that. But I do this often and uh, it's just as easy with one person. Um, after a couple cycles, you want to check that. But... It doesn't go down quite as fast as you might think. There isn't that much fluid in between there and here, but you definitely want to keep an eye on it. So anyway, you can see I put the cap on so this isn't spouting out. It'll get all over your paint and you don't want, obviously don't want it in your gauges, which is open now. So first thing you want to do, pull this, make sure you have pressure. Now, this has full pressure because I did not drain the fluid. If this didn't have any fluid in it, I would have to build up the pressure. This new fluid that I put in would have to work its way down to the bottom. But in this case, we're not letting air in the system. We're pumping fresh fluid in to replace the old fluid that is still in the line. If you remember, we took out the top fluid that was dirty and we're pumping fresh fluid down, simply replacing the old fluid which is in the system. We already have pressure here. I can already feel that it's working. So basically, I'm going to go down here. And I'm sorry, I can't do this and hold my camera at the same time. So what I'm going to do is pump this. One. I mean, basically, it's ready to, ready to go. I just need to pump that lever. One. Typically, you'd want to pump it up, but... It already has pressure. So then while holding that, I'm gonna crack this. Basically just crack it open. You'll see fluid come through. Shut it again. Pump up the system again. Crack it. And what I wanna do is always shut this before you let that lever uh, back out. Because when you let that lever back out, it's gonna suck the fluid back in and you uh, might get air sucked back into the system. 
So we don't want to do that. So pump the lever maybe seven times until you have full pressure. Crack this, fluid comes out. And what I'm going to be watching for is darker fluid coming through. And then I want to see my lighter fluid, which is the clean stuff that I put in the reservoir up top. So I'm just going to crack this and watch the fluid come through. See if I can get you a video of this. So pump, pump, pump. We're going to crack, hold that lever in, crack this guy, open. All right. So got a little bit of air out of the system. So that's good. We don't want air in the system. So I'm going to pump that up. One, two, three, four, five. Crack that open. We got some fluid through. Pump it back up. I'm feeling pressure now. One, two, three, four. Hold the lever. Crack that. Push some fluid through. Not getting any air, so that's good. I pumped it up to five. Going to hold the lever in. Crack it. Push a little bit through. Lever goes to the bar. Close that up. Let the lever loose. So I wasn't watching my lever or my level and I got air in the system. So I had to pump the air out at the top. Now I have firm pressure again. I can crack this, open her up, shoot some fluid out. Now I gotta pump it up again. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now obviously I pumped a full, uh, reservoir down through. I filled this up again. I'm just about to the point where I'm going to dip below this hole and I don't want to suck air in. So I'm going to fill this back up and I'm getting pretty good clean fluid down through here. I never really had a bad color change. It just, the fluid was good. It was just a little dirty up there in the tank. But, uh, so I'm pretty happy with the fact that I've got full fluid coming through there's no air bubbles coming through so uh, I'm gonna top up the fluid and basically leave this on here for a minute there's one more thing we need to do once we're comfortable with that we have to bleed it right here at the banjo bolt so we're basically gonna do the same thing grab a wrench make sure it's tight on there you're gonna pump the lever up Pump, 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 make sure you have pressure. Crack this. You should only have to do this one, t one or two times because air can get stuck in here and then you're gonna have the same problem. You may not have a clutch. So what we're gonna do, fill this back up, pump up the lever, crack this, shut it, let the lever free. I'll do it one or two more times and this system should be bled. It's all clean with clean fluid. And we'll just put the cap back on down there, put the cap back on here, cover up the banjo bolt, and we'll be good to go. Ready to get this bike back on the road. Okay guys, we're done bleeding down here. Fluid's coming out, it's clean, it's happy, it's not, no air bubbles. Uh, I let this run dry again, <laughs> suck some air in. When you're pulling this clutch lever in, if you're getting air bubbles coming up from that middle hole there, then you probably have air in your system. See that piston moving in there? That's what draws fluid down through. So I'm not getting any air. So what I have to do yet is uh, use a 12 millimeter wrench here. Crack that sucker. If air squirts out, you know there was some air stuck in there. If not, we're probably good to go. I'll do it a second time, make sure. Also make sure that you're protecting your paint and stuff because fluid is going to come out of here when you crack this. So just letting you know. So this is the same as the bottom as I said before. Pump it up, open that, shut it, and let your lever out. Boy do I wish I had that on video. When I cracked this bolt the first time, it you heard the air hiss out. So it was definitely air stuck in this banjo bolt because um, it is a high point in the system because it comes up here and then drops down a little bit into the bottom here so definitely got air out the first time second time just fluid checked it again third time just fluid I am super comfortable with that it seems good pressures built back up 
I'm not getting any air bubbles through here. I'm gonna top this sucker off, make sure I have it in the window, make sure my level's good, and button it all up. So hopefully that shows you what you're wanting to do if you need to bleed out your system. It's pretty easy if you're careful and you take your time and you watch this level right here. The other good thing is pushing your new fluid up from the bottom. But if you don't, I like to do that when I don't have any fuel, fluid in the system. In this case, it was fluid in the system, so all I was doing was chasing old stuff out. There was no air in there until I let it in. But in this case, I didn't have to worry about chasing a ton of air out of the system. It was relatively easy, and hopefully, this is the last thing I need to do as far as uh, getting this bike back on the road. Yeah, I'll button it up. Definitely a lot cleaner in there and uh, clean fluid down through the system. So plenty of pressure here right now. I am, of course, confident that this is working. And uh, we'll top it off. So thanks for watching, guys. If you need another video, I did a video, I believe, on a Magna and a Shadow. Look over my channel. Find the ones that talk about brakes and clutches and uh, you should be good to go. Watch all the videos. Maybe I got some better tips and tricks in that one, but it's basically the same, same thing you gotta do all the time. So anyway, have a great one, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one, hopefully on the road with this lovely 84 Sabre.